Hello, welcome to BioGrid TV. If you're new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. Biography of Simon Mwansa Kapwepwe Simon Mwansa Kapwepwe was a Zambian politician who once served as the vice president of the country. Perhaps he could have gone on to become president, but for political intrigues and obstacles placed on his path by his childhood friend turned political enemy. But such is life, you win some and lose some. Let us take a closer look at the life of this Zambian leader. Simon Kapwepwe was born on the 12th of April 1922 in the Chinsali district of Northern Rhodesia as Zambia was known in the colonial era. After completing his primary and secondary education, he first worked as a driver in the public works department and then as a primary school teacher in 1945. Still on the search for greener pasture, he along with his bosom friend and future president, Kenneth Kaunda, in 1947 left Zambia for Tanganyika, that is Tanzania, in search of jobs. He returned to Zambia in 1948, where he became an assistant welfare officer with the Kitwe Municipal Council and then a primary school teacher. Like most Africans in northern Rhodesia, he did not like the fact that they were treated as inferior by the white minority government in their own land and had very limited say in how they were governed. So, in 1948, he became a founding member of the Northern Rhodesia African Congress with the hope of fighting for independence. The party was shortly after renamed African National Congress ANC. In 1950, an opportunity presented itself to Kapwepwe to travel to India to study journalism on scholarship. He was there until 1955 and when he returned in, he met the ANC without a leader as the key leaders Harry Unkumbula and Kenneth Kaunda were both in prison then. Not one to sit back and allow things go bad, he immediately took up the leadership of the party in acting capacity until the leaders were released. Having shown his leadership ability, he was appointed acting provincial organizer for Northern Province. He also became the treasurer of the ANC in 1956. Unkumbula, who led the ANC, had been accused of being too domineering. Also, his willingness to participate in the 1958 elections, in which many Africans would be denied the right to vote, further caused a rift in the party with many members leaving. Kapwepwe was one of those who left, joining Kenneth Kaunda and Sikotawina. Together in October 1958, they formed a new party called the Zambia African National Congress ZANC. But the new party soon found itself in hot waters when it was declared illegal by the colonial government in 1959. Not only that, many of its leaders were arrested and imprisoned including Kapwepwe, but the members who escaped refused to give up. Under the leadership of Mainzachona, they formed a new party called the United National Independence Party UNIP, to replace the one that was banned. So, when Kapwepwe was released in December 1959, rather than go home quietly and stay away from trouble, he plugged himself right back into the new party and even helped to organize provincial and district branches of UNIP. In 1960, it was becoming clear that Zambia would soon be independent, which Kapwepwe and the others had been fighting for. He was one of the delegates that went to London that year to attend the Federal Review Conference where the foundation for Zambia's independence was laid. In 1962, Kapwepwe contested in the parliamentary elections and won convincingly, becoming the Minister for African Agriculture. In 1964, he was made Minister of Home Affairs and then Minister of Foreign Affairs for another three years. After Zambia became independent in October 1964, he and his childhood friend, 
Kenneth Kaunda began to drift apart. In fact, things went so bad that Kapwepwe began a rebellion within the UNIP, which was headed by Kaunda. He contested for the position of deputy leader of the party and won, forcing Kaunda to appoint him as vice president. In his new position, he tried to push for policies that were different from what Kaunda wanted, but Kaunda was able to sideline most of them. In 1969, he decided to resign from his positions as vice president and deputy leader of UNIP, but in spite of their differences, Kaunda did not want to lose him entirely, so he managed to change his mind. However, in October 1970, Kaunda removed him from his position as vice president and replaced him with Mainza Chona. But he was allowed to retain his portfolio as Minister for Culture and Minister for Local Government. After Kapwepwe was removed from his position as vice president, his loyalty to the party which he helped form began to crumble. In fact, rumors started circulating that he had founded a new party called the United Progressive Party UPP, but he denied having such. It was not until Kaunda dismissed four cabinet members he suspected were secretly part of the new party that Kapwepwe came clean. In August 1971, he formally resigned from the UNIP and the government and declared that it was true that he was the leader of the UPP. In December 1971, Standing as the candidate of the new party, UPP, he won a by-election and became his party's only representative in the parliament. This outcome greatly displeased Kaunda, who felt betrayed by Kapwepwe's departure from the UNIP. So, on the 4th of February, 1972, he announced that the UPP had been banned, not only that, he imprisoned about 122 members of the party, including Kapwepwe. If you want to kill a dog, you give it a bad name, they say. For Kaunda, his excuse for the actions was that UPP was an instrument of the Rhodesian, that is Zimbabwe, and South African governments, which wanted to impose white minority rule in Zambia. Kapwepwe did not regain his freedom, until 31st December 1972. Having been stripped of his political power, Kapwepwe continued to be harassed by the government. In February 1973, he got arrested for illegal possession of guns and was handed a two-year suspended sentence. The report from the government-controlled media was that he had sent people to undertake military training outside Zambia so they could return and wreak havoc in the country. Thankfully, the judiciary was not entirely under full government control, so he won when he sued the newspaper houses for defamation. Feeling he had gotten to the end of the road as far as politics was concerned, Kapwepwe left his lifelong pursuit in career politics and went to live in his farm in Chinsali. But even then, Kaunda still went after him, this time though, in the spirit of national unity according to him. He asked Kapwepwe to return to the UNIP in September 1977. The temptation was too great for Kapwepwe and he changed his mind about quitting politics and returned. But he was not entirely sure of his former friend's sincerity, so to test it, he decided to contest the party's presidential nomination against Kaunda. True to his suspicions, last-minute changes were made to the party's constitution, which conveniently had him disqualified from contesting. This time, Kapwepwe hung his political boots for good and went back to his farm. There he died on the 26th of January, 1980. What have we missed out of this biography of Kapwepwe? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, share, and subscribe to our channel.